Hello and what's up YouTube? This video is an update of my homemade powder coating equipment. If you have seen my earlier videos, you will know that I made this homemade powder coating gun with this plastic bottle and a few other scraps. It does work, but there are still a lot to be improved, and I will talk about that later. Now this air blow gun connected to compressed air. It is blowing air inside the bottle through this tube. The tube for the air goes inside this PVC pipe elbow. That will cause the powder to exit the nozzle that have the central conductor connected to a high voltage power supply. The tip of the conductor will create a corona discharge that will charge the powder as they exit the nozzle. Now this setup needs compressed air, but I don't have an air compressor at the moment, so I will try to improvise the air supply. I have this portable paint sprayer, and the way it works is with this hose connected to a blower. It is just a blower, not an air compressor. Air will pass by the gun and draw the paint from the jar out of the gun by Venturi effect. I have used it only a couple of times and not really impressed with it. The problem is, if you don't clean it well after use, it gets clogged with paint and it stopped working. I had an idea to use the blower unit to supply air to my powder coating gun in lieu of an air compressor. This is an accessory from a vacuum cleaner and it fits snug to the output of the blower. I cut it at the end, drill a hole, and inserted a half inch hose. You can see the hose inside there. Then I seal everything with epoxy clay. I fitted this small ball valve to the other end of the hose and a fitting to connect a smaller hose. That small hose will supply air coming from the blower in place of the compressed air. I can control the amount of air through this ball valve. When the valve is closed, this end will be pushed out, so I got a rubber band to hold it in place. You can see how this contraption will work. So I will hold the gun in one hand and control the valve with my other hand. I still have some powder remaining in the bottle. Now let's try if we can create a cloud of powder coming out of the gun. Okay, that seems to work. The powder coating gun does not require a lot of pressure, so it actually works with just a blower. Now I will show you the problem I have with this setup.
I suspect that the powder is accumulating in this area where the inner tube is inserted. And the accumulated powder will sometimes fall out of the nozzle. Too much powder falling out of the gun instead of it forming a cloud will not produce a good result. This is one of the plastic jar that I prepared for, for my powder coating gun. The jar cover has this PVC bulk head fitting used in home electrical installation. With that, I can connect this PVC elbow and nozzle of the previous gun. I will revise my powder container so that the air tube is not passing through the powder tube. I use a Sharpie pen for the air tube and it is a good fit to my air hose. This new air tube will be positioned next to the powder tube instead of it going inside as from the previous setup. I drilled another hole in the jar and inserted that tube. I sealed and fixed everything in place using some epoxy clay. So that is how my new powder container will look like. Now let's try if this setup works. I connect the positive clip to the central conductor terminal and the negative clip already attached to the piece I want to powder coat. I turn on the power supply and you can see the spark jumps from the central conductor telling me that high voltage is present. Be sure to see my video how I made the power supply if you have not done yet. I turn on the blower and let's start blowing some powder. After the piece is fully covered with powder, I then put it in the oven set to 200 degrees Celsius to cure. I 
I am checking the temperature of the item and I start timing the cure time as soon as it gets to about 200 degrees Celsius. I let it cure in the oven for about 15 minutes. You will see the power indicator light at the lower right of the oven switching on and off. That is the PID controller that I incorporated to the oven regulating the temperature. After 15 minutes of cure time, it is done and the powder completely melted and have a smooth, shiny appearance. I go ahead and powder coated my other pieces using the same setup. Again, I am not using an air compressor, just a blower, but it seems to work fine. With the piece being coated hanging, I tried as much as possible to shoot the powder at the bottom of the piece. That way, I'm assured that the powder stick to due to electrostatic charge and not just falling on top of the piece. Also to avoid too thick of a powder application. I do not have a spray booth yet, so I do the powder coating application outside in a corner where I can easily hose off the excess powder that fall in the floor. I inspected the piece to make sure I did not miss any spot that I want to powder coat. These pieces I am powder coating are wheel hubs of my Yamaha DT motorcycle that I am building and restoring. Please look at my other videos of my Yamaha DT motorcycle build to see more about these items. I then put these pieces to the oven to cure the powder. The PID controller on the lower right regulates the temperature of the oven. You will see more about my oven modification for powder coating on my other videos. And these are the finished products, the wheel hubs of my Yamaha DT motorcycle. I did not spend a lot of effort cleaning and preparing the surface, but the end results are not too bad for a very low cost homemade powder coating setup. There are still many things to improve with my setup and I will try to cover that on my next videos. So please be sure to subscribe. I hope that you subscribe to my channel to see more of my homemade powder coating videos and the other stuff I am working on that you may find interesting. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching and supporting my channel.